Let's go to the Word of God tonight in the prophet Isaiah, in the 53rd chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Amen. This morning, we began a new series of teaching on the miracles of Jesus. Amen. Healing miracles of Jesus. You know, some people have counted the miracles, and uh, there's a difference as to how many miracles are done in the Gospels. Some say about 33, some say 40, some say even up to 50. So it just depends on how you look at them. But we're going to be focusing on the healing miracles of Jesus and just had an awesome, wonderful presence of God this morning, wonderful move of God this morning, people's bodies being touched, minds being touched, spirits being renewed, people being renewed in the Holy Ghost, and uh, just a wonderful opportunity to be in God's house this morning and again tonight. If you have your Bible, turn to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, Isaiah chapter 53, amen. You know, we think about God, what does God think of people? What does God think of you? How does does God work? What is His desire? What is His will uh, in, in life for people to experience? And we learn about God, what kind of God He is when you look at the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's a God that is not only willing, but wants to heal people. And, and not, not just save people, but people that are not even saved. Not even saved. If you look in the 8th chapter, the Bible talks about a move of God. In the 8th chapter of the book of Acts, spirits got cast out. People were healed of palsy, sicknesses and disease. All kinds of things were happening. They were filled with joy and weren't even saved. And then after that happened, then the Bible said they were baptized and filled with the Spirit of God. So oftentimes God will heal people. uh, And and a lot of it, we need to understand that the healings of God are just pictures of what's coming in the ultimate, in the future. Uh, So we get a little bit of a microcosm of what God is all about and what's going to happen in the future uh, in, in the momentary time that we live in. Amen. But God has a desire to heal people. God has a desire to save people. God cares about people. God loves people. Amen. In contrast to the Pharisees, there were certain people, they didn't think God could heal or should heal. Like the Herodian we talked about this morning, the Herodian and his son. But God is God, and I'm glad that he's God. Amen. And we're going to see this this God tonight. We're going to learn more about this healing God. So we're going to talk about the healings of Jesus, the healing of Jesus. Amen. Look at your name and say, Jesus is our healer. Amen. We're just going to title this Jesus the Healer. Jesus the Healer. All right. Isaiah 53, if you have it, say praise the Lord. The Bible said, Who hath believed our report, and whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now. We ask your blessing to be upon the preaching and teaching of your holy word. That you might be glorified, that you might be honored tonight, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. We studied this morning miracles. What are miracles? What does that mean when you talk about miracles? It really doesn't. The word miracle doesn't come from a Hebrew word or a Greek word. It is a word that it comes from a Latin word, miraculum. Okay, 
And uh, from the Latin point of view, of a miracle is something that is amazing. It's an amazing event. The Hebrew words that are translated miracle and the Greek word that's translated miracles in the Bible, it speaks of a wonder. It speaks of a sign. It speaks, again, of something that's amazing. It also speaks of a great and mighty act. And so when you talk about the miracles of God and the miracles of Jesus Christ, you're, some, you're talking about something that's amazing, Amen. something that's wonderful to make your eyes pop out. Amen. It's just a wonder when God does it. He doesn't fight the laws of nature, but it's something that He does outside of nature, the natural process of life. He can suspend those laws. He can go outside of those laws and do mighty miracles contrary to the laws of nature. But it doesn't mean that he's fighting nature itself or the laws of nature because he put those in place. But the one that put him in place has the ability to step outside of those laws and to reverse things and do things miraculously that, that we don't even understand in a natural way. A miracle is something that's a mystery, something you can't understand other than just knowing that it's a dynamic work of God. It is to manifest the kingdom of God. It's God manifest in active force. It is not necessarily when those miracles are done to prove that Jesus is God. Although they do prove He is God. Because God uses people to do miracles. And obviously when miracles are done by people, God through them, that's not so that they could be seen as God. It is to declare that God is present. His presence is here. His kingdom is here. Manifest power of God. And behind that power is authority. Authority is the right to use the power. Authority is a power. But authority is the right to use power. Authority is what sets power in action. And what sets power into motion. And so because you're baptized in Jesus' name. You have authority. Amen. To see miracles take place. In the name of Jesus there is authority. The right to do something. And the Holy Ghost gives you the dynamic power to see miracles take place. That transcend time and space and goes outside of the laws of nature. It's something to make your eyes pop out in wonderment and amazement. Amen. God is the only one that I, I know that can cause a body that has died and begin to decay to come back to life and be restored. He's that kind of a God. Amen. And that's the God that we serve. And as you study, and we're going to be studying for many, many weeks the miracles of Jesus, especially in the area of healing, you're going to see the willingness of Jesus Christ to heal people. He's willing to heal people. He wants to heal people. He has a desire to save people. Amen. And so Isaiah 53, we see Jesus Christ coming into this world. And there's a lot of pain, a lot of suffering that's in the world. But He has come to take our place so that we could be healed. Amen. When we study the Bible, then we will see what God does. When He works a miracle, He is reversing curses that are in the earth. When you look over there in, like, for example, the book of Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, you'll see all kinds of disease and sickness. You'll see uh, problems in the mind, emotions, all kinds of things emotionally, physically, spiritually, that come to people as a result simply because they're out of step with God. There's a lot of things that come in people's lives because they're out of step with God. Amen. Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28 lists many of those things. Every type of disease, every type of emotional breakdown, every type of, of spiritual situation that you could think of, of despair, whatever, is because man is not walking in step with God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. It's something that man brings upon himself. I don't necessarily believe that God is the one that's up there trying to do people harm and do them in a bad way. You understand what I mean by that. But I think because we sometimes get out of step with God that the blotch of Egypt comes upon us and, and all kinds of, of, of things in the mind and spiritual, emotional things come to us because we're not where we should be in God. But the God I preach to you tonight is a God who steps into those things and seeks to reverse. He's the one that comes to heal. The devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ came that you might have life and that more abundantly. That's the kind of God that we serve. 
When you think about it, amen, the curses, just read through those curses. He has come to reverse the curse and to bring healing into our lives. Amen, praise God. You look in the beginning book in the Bible in Genesis, we see that God made man in his image. And then when he made man in his image, he walked in the life of God. But something happened. He sinned against God and there was a fall that came to mankind. And as a result of that fall, sin, sickness, and death came into this world. Amen? Because of the fall of man. And so what Jesus did, he had a plan to come and reverse all of that that the fall had brought with it. The curses, amen. The sickness, the disease, the lostness of man. Jesus came for that very purpose. That is the kind of God that we serve. In the book of Genesis, you will see generation. And that simply means that God made man. He generated man and gave man life. And then after the fall, there was a degeneration that came to this world and to mankind. Regeneration. Jesus said to his disciples one day, you will sit with me in the regeneration of the earth. What he meant by that is there's going to be a renewal. There was once a generation that became degenerated. But that degeneration is going to be reversed by God himself. And he's going to bring a regeneration to mankind and to the world as a whole. That is what it's all about, brothers and sisters. God is a, a God that desires to heal. A God that desires to save people. The prophets touched on it briefly. In Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 35 and 5 and we'll see what the prophets said, you know. Of course, we can go all the way back to the book of Genesis in Genesis 3.15. The Bible says he would crush the head of the serpent when he would come. Amen. He would defeat everything that would, was brought to mankind that, that was uh, of the enemy. Praise God. Amen. He's going to crush the head of the serpent. And then he said of Abraham, what did he say about Abraham? In thy seed all the families of the earth shall be what? Blessed. They're going to experience shalom in the seed of Abraham. That's Jesus Christ. Power to prosper. Power to be healed. Power to be delivered. Power, amen, of sick, to be healed of sickness and disease and all kinds of emotional problems, amen. Spiritual situations because he is the seed of Abraham. The prophets picked up on it, Isaiah 35. Let's look at this verse here. And I'm just going to take you through some verses here and just read them to you. The Bible says that when Jesus Christ comes into the world, this is what he's going to do. He suddenly, say suddenly, when he comes, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Some people look at these verses and they say that's all spiritual. That he's only going to heal spiritual blindness and, and open uh, spiritually deaf ears. But the Bible is very clear. That it's not just spiritual, but it's also physical. That he's going to open eyes that are blind in the physical. He's going to open ears uh, that cannot hear in the physical. He's going to cause people to dance and to sing again and to rejoice. Suddenly he's going to come with this kind of power and this kind of healing. That's what God does. Amen. Through Jesus Christ and Isaiah 40. We'll just stay in this prophet tonight, Isaiah 40. The scripture tells us here in verse 29. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. That's not just spiritual strength, but that's physical strength. He can touch your body. You might be weak in body tonight, but when he touches your body with his energy, with his life, with his power, with his dynamic ability, amen, dunamis power, when he touches you, he gives you physical strength, not just spiritual strength. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their what? strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint see that's not just spiritual stuff that's physical things somebody said well all the miracles stop when the apostles when they ended no more miracles are taking place you cannot prove that in church history 
You can't prove it by the Bible. You can't prove it in church history. In fact, church history says something just the opposite of that. That all through church history, there have been miracles documented of the power of God. And He's still working miracles today. So that's something that happened a long time ago. That's not happening today. It happens today, brothers and sisters. And so the Bible tells us, let's look at another verse here in 42 of Isaiah. He said, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of peace for a light for the Gentiles. To do what? To open blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison. When he comes, this is what he's going to do. This is what God is going to be doing. All these miraculous things taking place in people's physical body. But then he said, I'm going to go into prisons, and I'm going to bring prisoners out of prison. Hallelujah. I'm going to set the captive free. And then they set in darkness out out of the prison house. I thank God tonight that he's able to set us free, bring us out of our prisons. The same prophet Isaiah in 61, he says this. Isaiah 61 quoted In Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord, verse 1, God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the year of Jubilee. It's a time of restoration. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. And he skipped over that. Amen. When he read, when he said, read that in Luke chapter 4. Let's go there. And so we have all these prophets that were, were talked about what Jesus would do. In fact, Malachi, the Bible says in Malachi chapter 4 that when he comes, he would come with healing in his rays like a sun. You know how it is sometimes, brothers and sisters, you go outside and it's cold and it's got all kinds of clouds and everything. And then all of a sudden, the sun, the sun shines through. And you feel that light, that sun hits your face and it feels so good. The Bible said when Jesus Christ comes, He'd come with healing in His rays, healing in His beams. It's like all of a sudden you just feel the sun shining on your face. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. Luke chapter 4, Amen. The Bible tells us here, Jesus took that very verse of Isaiah 61. This is what he says. He says this, amen, praise God. What a mighty God he is. Thank you, God. Verse 16, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his custom was he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Notice he doesn't say the year of the vengeance of our God. He stops right there. That's, it's not time, he's saying. It's not time for the wrath of God. It's time for people to be healed. It's time for people to come out of prisons. It's time for the blind to see, praise God. And then the Bible says in verse 20, he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. So this is what he's come to do. This is what God comes to do. This is what Jesus does in people's lives. Amen. He has a desire. He's willing to do that. Praise God. Go to the book of Acts 16. Let's look at something here. 16 and 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be what? Saved in thy house. You're going to be saved. The Greek word is sozo. And when you look at the Word of God in the Gospels and the Bible, you will see that the word salvation is not just about the saving of your soul. It's not just about eternal life. The Bible said oftentimes when somebody was healed in their bodies, the term sozo, salvation, or saved was used. 
What God is showing you, he, doesn't just, he didn't just come to save a part of you. He didn't just come to save your spirit or your soul. He came to save your whole person. We in Pentecost like to talk about, yeah, we're saving souls. Uh, saving souls, what are you going to do, just save one part of a person? No, you're made up of body, soul, and spirit. And so when God talks about salvation, sozo, God, when God does sozo, He doesn't just save your spirit eternally. He came to save you in your body physically. He came to save you emotionally. He came to save the whole person. That's what God is doing in the sozo. Matthew 10, let's go there in verse 8. Matthew 10 and 8. He's willing to. He desires to. The more you study the miracles of the Lord. We preached the nobleman's son this morning and saw God do an awesome miracle for the nobleman's son who was, had a fever that was fatal. And God healed that fatal fever. Hallelujah. Here's what he says to his disciples. He said, verse 7, I'll start there. As you go preach again, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How are you going to know it? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. This is what happens when God shows up. If you want to know it's, if it's God or not, this is the way you can know if it's God. When you see these signs and these miracles want, are done, you know it's God. God is moving. God is doing something. That God, this is because this is what God does. Amen. Brother sat with me across from my desk tonight before service, and uh, we prayed for him this morning. He was speaking in tongues, and uh, he asked me some questions about that, you know. And I told him, I said, the devil, that's not the devil, because if you ask God for a, a bread, he'll give you bread. If you ask him for an egg, he'll give you an egg. He won't give you a serpent, praise God. Amen. And I said, what you have, brother, is not the devil. The devil, if the devil came in you, you would lose complete control. But you're the one that does the speaking as the Spirit gives the utterance. It is God's power, God's presence in your life that is being manifested in your life. This is what God does. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus comes to bring miracles in people's lives. That's the kind of God that we serve. And when you and I go forth, that's what we should be doing. If we're not praying for the sick, if we're not believing that God wants to heal people, we're not doing what we should do because God wants to manifest that same power in your life and in my life. Let's give God worship in the house. Heal the sick, cleanse lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's willing. He wants to heal. He wants to save people, not just their soul, but their physical bodies and, and to touch their minds and every aspect of your being. This is the kind of God that we have in our life that we serve. Look at your neighbor and tell him he's a good God. Amen. And I said this morning, you don't even have to be saved to experience that. God wants to heal people even if they're not saved. Because that's the kind of God that He is. He is a faithful God. He's a wonderful God. Hallelujah. So just like this morning, amen, we declared that word, that truth to you. And God began to manifest His presence. See, that's what the kingdom of God is. It's the manifest presence of God in action. If you'll stand right now, you're going to feel the presence of God. You need to be touched in your mind. God's going to touch your mind. You need to be touched in your body. God can heal your body. Whatever you need, He has come to reverse the curse. In the name of Jesus. John the Baptist, we call him John the Baptist. He got discouraged one day. And he was in prison and he was really down, really down. His ministry, you know, he's fixing to give his life. He's fixing to lose his head. And 
in that, in that cell. And no doubt he was anticipating what was going to happen to him. In that moment when he was discouraged, he asked the question. He says, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? Or should we look for another? And Jesus sent those that had come to him with that question from John. And Jesus said, here's my credentials. If you want to know I'm the one, here's my credentials. He said, look, the blind see. He said, the lame leap, the lame are healed. He said, these are my credentials. If you want to know if Messiah has come, look for these things to happen. Amen. And John went to his death knowing that Jesus was the Messiah because the credentials that God is here is healing, manifest power of his presence. Amen. Lift your hands and just worship God and praise him. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Before he was received up, the Bible says, the man of all is. He told them, he said this right here. He said, he made a statement. He said, all power, all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. That means he has power over the spirit world. He has power in the earthly realm. He has power over demonic spirits, over all powers in the universe. He's in control over all powers, all the spirit world and all the natural world right now. If you'll just believe, God can move mountains. If you'll just believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you know it to be true because you once were lost, but now you're found. You once were blind, but now you see. You once were deaf, but now you hear. You've experienced the miracle working of God's power. God in sozo, God saving you. You know. You know he's able. You know it's true. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, we speak healing to Sister Barbara's body right now. The sickness that is in her body right now, Lord, we command it in the name of Jesus to leave Sister Barbara. We speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Send your word to heal her right now, God. In her home, Lord Jesus. Heal her, Lord, in your name. 
in the name of Jesus. Precious God, precious God. Hallelujah. Set the captive free. Give sight to the blind. Open the prison doors to captives. Hey, Kalabosi. The acceptable year of the Lord. Stretch forth your hand. God, God wants to use the body right now to minister. Stretch forth your hand to somebody and pray for them. Yeah, let God use the body right now to minister to the body. <clears throat> Hallelujah, King. Hallelujah, King. Hallelujah, King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Katare sede da kose. Suddenly the lame leap. Suddenly eyes are open. Suddenly people are dancing and singing. Suddenly when God shows up, this is the kind of God that He is. Mighty God. God, praise God. Yaranda la bakasa taralamo. Hallelujah. By the word of God, we declare the kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is at hand. That means it's within reach. Just reach out and touch the Lord. Just reach out and touch Him. The kingdom of God is within reach. Manifest presence of God. Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you. 
Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. In 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 Jesus' name. Awesome. Awesome God. Hallelujah, awesome God. Praise you, God. Serpents begin to bite the people in the Old Testament. Fiery serpents. Maybe when they bit the people, the venom that went into their bodies, would like setting their bodies on fire. God told Moses to take a serpent and lift it up on a pole. What an unusual symbol. Take a serpent, lift it up on a pole, and everybody that by faith lifts their eyes to that serpent that's on that pole would be instantly healed, that serpent's poison. And so they lifted the serpent up on the pole, the symbol of what was causing their death. And when that serpent was lifted up on that pole, the symbol of what caused their death, and they just fastened their eyes on that serpent, on that pole, they were instantly healed. Mothers grabbed their children that had been bitten by serpents and lifted their eyes to that pole so their eyes could look upon that serpent on that pole. And those children were instantly healed. Why would God use that serpent? Because he's showing you what was causing their death died. So that when Jesus Christ went to that cross and he was lifted up on that pole like a serpent, he killed death. He defeated what defeats you. He, amen, what was causing their death, what caused my death and your death. Because Jesus was lifted up on that cross. He defeated death. What caused my death. He's had defeated sickness and disease. All we have to do is by faith look to him right now. Jesus is the healer. Worthy are you to be praised, Jesus. Hallelujah. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. There are certain things in John 3, the Bible says that man must do 
You must be born again of the water and the spirit or you'll not see the kingdom of God. That is something that man must do. But there are things in that chapter, in chapter 3, when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, there are things that Jesus must do. And that is one of them. He must be lifted up on that cross. And when he's lifted up on that cross, he defeats death. He destroys it. He defeats him that has the power of death. Even the devil, hallelujah, has been defeated by the work of Jesus on that cross. What he must do, he did. Yeah. Ooh, praise God. Amen. Lift up your hands, lift up your eyes and focus upon Jesus. Put your faith in his power. Put your faith in him, not in your own faith. Not in your own ability, not in your own works, but in His power, His presence. Yes, Lord, amen. Mighty God. Mighty God. As we said this morning, you find yourself in difficult, challenging situations. Exercise faith. Let that time of suffering be the birth pains of faith. Let that time of suffering be the womb which carries faith that will see God, God's presence and power come into that suffering and bring healing. He did it this morning in that message, the nobleman's son with a fatal fever. That nobleman went to Jesus Christ, the healer, with a spark of faith. His suffering was the womb, the birth pains of faith. He put his faith in Jesus Christ and that fatal fever that was in his son was instantly, not gradually, but instantly healed by a word that came from the mouth of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said he and his whole house believed. God wants to work miracles in this time, in this generation. That people would be ultimately saved eternally. I'm going to say this one more time and I'm going to let you go. God doesn't always do it the way we think he, we want him to do it. The old man said, if you come, my son's about to die. If you come, you can heal him. If you come... I need you to come. I need you to travel 20 miles. And if you travel 20 miles from Cana to Capernaum, then I believe my son will be healed. That wasn't the way Jesus was going to do it. He's going to speak the word. So he corrected his. He focused in a focal point of the weakness of his faith. He says, except you see signs and wonders, you'll not believe. You're putting faith in the wrong thing. You need to put faith in the power and presence of God. But anyway, to make a long story short, that young man with a fatal fever was healed instantly, not gradually, by the power of God. And that man found out that you, you don't try to tell God how to do it. You're simply trusting. I will tell you tonight as I get ready to let you go, there is no formula for healing. You go through the Bible and you will see, and we're going to be preaching the miracles of Jesus. There is no particular f- formula that he followed. Every blind eye, he didn't get mud and put it on every blind eye. He didn't spit and use saliva to heal every time. There was no set formula. You cannot put God in a box. You just simply go to God by faith and say, Lord, this is my need. I put my faith in your word. I believe you. I take you at your word. And then watch God do it his way. And he will do it. Praise God. He's that kind of a God. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But he desires, he desires, he's willing to heal. He's willing to do miracles in your life and in my life, in this church. Praise God. Amen. Let's stand one more time and lift our hands and give God the praise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you for that example this morning of the nobleman who took his pain. He took his suffering and let it be the womb of faith. You added to the joy of a wedding feast. And then you took and you took away the sorrow of another home. Teach us, oh God, to know what to do with the pain in our life. Let it be the womb of faith to believe you, God, for supernatural, supernatural manifestation of your presence. God's word is hitting every skepticism. God's word is hitting every doubt right now. God's word is coming to you to increase your faith. No matter what your condition or your situation, God has come right now. His word is coming powerful to you to help you, to encourage you in your faith to believe God. You're standing there and you're saying, but pastor, I'm not sick. Amen. That's wonderful. But we still need to get a revelation that Jesus is a healer. And when you get that revelation, then you'll go out there and God will use you to see people experience miracles in their life. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for speaking to us. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have spoken to us, Lord, tonight in this service, in this house. And we love you and we thank you for being God. We trust you, Lord Jesus, with our life. We will not tell you how to do it. But we will believe. We will believe in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can have strong faith in the wrong thing and have no results. I'm going to say it again. You can have strong faith, but your faith is in the wrong thing. You have no results. You can have weak faith, little faith, in the right one, Jesus, His power. Little faith will produce results because you put your faith in Jesus. Mm. Mighty God, I thank you today. Lord Jesus, right now, putting our faith in you, your power, Jesus, you're the healer. You're the healer. Glory to God. Glory to God. A little testimony. Somebody the other day, a little bit anxious about certain situations in, in their life. And uh, I simply told them, I said, I never worry about stuff like that. You know. And uh, it had to do with you know, their income and stuff. And uh, I said, I never worry about any of that at all. I trust God. I believe God. I have faith that God is going to intervene. Praise God. And you know what? He always has. And, and I, I told you this morning, if you think in the morning you're going to get up and God wants to take everything away from you and you're going to lose everything you got, and that's not God. God cares about you God can intervene God can meet the need He can reverse the curse of poverty He can reverse the curse of sickness and disease He can reverse the curse of mental illness Glory to God Everybody said in Jesus name God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Love each and every one of you. Thank you for being in the house of God tonight. Amen.